if you are brand new to the business, um, you probably hear everyone telling you that groups are the way to go. And I will tell you, groups can be extremely profitable and no one does groups, as you can probably see on the screen here, no matter what kind of group, no one does groups like Carnival. And so we really do think that there is an itinerary out there for every group and travel advisors, that's really where you come in is getting in touch with these groups and helping them get on board the perfect carnival vacation. So today's agenda, we're going to go through and talk about one, why sell groups, which that was a very brief overview on why sell groups. We'll talk about different types of groups. We'll also talk about what is a group specifically as far as the requirements. Then we'll go through group basics. We will touch very briefly on large groups and charters just because I know those questions are out there. And then I've got a few tips for you at the end. So let's jump in here and get started, try to make up for some lost time. <coughs> so why sell groups? Well, first of all, I mentioned at the very beginning, groups can be very profitable. And I know all of you are business owners and business minded, and that is honestly the ultimate goal in this business is one, to have a business you enjoy, but two, to um, make sure that you're profitable. Going right along with that, and this is a big one for me. This one to me is one of the most important reasons. I think groups really give you the ability to pursue business that is fulfilling and enjoyable to you. I think we're all in the travel business. It's a fun industry. Yes, it's a lot of work and we can make a lot of money, but I do think you can pursue business that is something you enjoy. And I'll tell you, if you sit down with any of our BDMs or talk with anyone at Carnival and we're trying to talk about groups, we want to know what you enjoy. Maybe you play pickleball. Maybe you collect sea glass. Maybe you do Zumba classes at your gym. You can build that type of business and I think it makes it more fun and even more successful. Also selling groups, when you're putting a group together, it also gives you the ability to um, sell over the competition. So rather than just booking a cruise out there, you're able to maybe put a package together. Not only are there a group of people who wanna to sell together, sail together, but you may be able to put in some early booking discounts. There could be a, um, some amenities you build in there, tour conductor credits, there's a flexible payment schedule. We'll go through all of that, but all of those are things that are going to make you even more competitive out there selling. It's also groups are an excellent way to grow your customer base. So think about it. You probably will have a group leader, someone that is out there helping you get people booked and sending them to you. Many group members, you don't know when you initially meet them. The group leader has sent them your way or they wanna join onto your group. So groups are an excellent way to grow your customer base and again, to increase your earnings. And I feel like we've said this multiple times. That last one says, instead of booking one cabin, you have the opportunity to sell multiple rooms saying it in an easier way, it's a whole lot easier to book a group of 50 rooms than it is to book 50 individual rooms. So it does make it easier to do business in volume. So let's talk through some of the different group types out there. And I'm gonna cover two main group types just so you, you understand the differences between the two. The first type of group out there is a speculative group or an open promotion. So that is basically where you find a good date, you think it's a good deal, and you hold group space and you blast it out to everyone you know. That's called an open promotion. Now, I will tell you that we have found that these are the least successful types of groups. And the main reason why is you don't have necessarily a built-in audience. You don't have anyone out there kind of sending people your way. You're having to do all of the promotion yourself. So from a time and money perspective, um, they tend to be more time consuming and more expensive because you've essentially got to get in front of people and convince them that they want to go on the state with you. Now I say they're the least successful type of group. Um, do know that some people out there have a lot of success with open promo groups. This could be that they have found a spring break date on a ship that's popular in their market. It could be that they put together an open promotion and build in their own programming. Maybe they bring a DJ along with them or a, um, a lecturer or somebody that people would like to see. So there are successful open promotions out there, but in general, we find that they're a little less successful. The types of groups we really like are affinity groups. So an affinity group is a group that has something in common, something that bonds them together. This could be a family group. It could be a church group. 
It could be a group of sorority sisters. It could be that pickleball group we were talking about. Um, people who like crafting could be singles. It could be everyone who graduated from high school the same year. So really anything that bonds people together, that's an affinity group. And we really like affinity groups because we think you have more chances of success with an affinity group because it's built in marketing. You get one or two people in that group talking about going and then everyone wants to go together. So we find that there's less marketing dollars, less time on your end um, in putting together an affinity group because most of the time the group themselves is kind of selling the cruise to each other. So when you are in GoCCL, you will see where it says open promo or affinity groups for group type. Just know that no matter how you book it, it's going to be the exact same process and procedure that we talk about today. That's more so for our internal purposes. So from our revenue management's um, perspective, they kind of want an idea of we've got a lot of open promos on a certain date that we know that maybe we're gonna get more cabins back after we after the payment dates for the group. So there's no difference in how the group operates. That's more so for internal purposes, but you do have to choose whether your group type is an open promo or affinity. So as we're talking through affinity groups here, there's a couple ones that I wanna spotlight. And, and these are not a, an inclusive list by any means, but just to get you thinking about different types of affinity groups out there to do, um, one of them that we see a lot are come along. So the come along groups are where there's a personality that people wanna travel with. This could be a radio personality. It could be a popular instructor at the gym. It could be just someone in town that everyone knows, um, could be a band that people wanna follow. But come along groups are very popular because there is a clear cut group leader and usually that group leader or Pied Piper, or whoever your personality is, is the one out there singing the praises and saying, hey, call my travel advisor at XYZ Travel and get your cruise book, come along with me. So we do like come along cruises. Those are an easy type of business to get if you can get the Pied Piper on board. Another type of affinity group that we really like are incentive groups. So incentive groups are any type of company that wants to reward either their employees or their customers. And the reason we like incentive groups so much, and if you were looking for business out there, start thinking about incentive groups. This could be real estate agencies, this could be medical or pharmaceutical, dentist office, doctor's office, um, insurance companies. So these companies want to, um, they want to kind of show off. They want to wine and dine the people that they're taking on the incentive group. So they tend to look at a higher type of stateroom, typically a balcony or a suite. They want to put all the extras in, whether it's a custom shore excursion or a um, cocktail party on board. And the nice thing is, is with an incentive group, usually it's whoever the company is that's sponsoring it is paying you with one credit card. So you're not having to track down multiple forms of payment. So we really like incentive groups. Going kind of hand in hand with incentive groups are corporate meeting groups. So companies that have their annual meetings. I mean, this is anyone and everyone. It depends on the company, but it could be that the company is paying for everyone or if they have a lot of independent contractors, they could be asking each participant to pay their own way. But for a corporate meeting group, we do have our lounges that we will use as meeting space. We do offer meeting space complimentary. Um, we just ask that the group is a little flexible on when they plan the meeting. We just have to make sure it doesn't conflict with the ship. But a meeting group on a cruise ship is a meeting planner's dream. It is turnkey. They're not having to look through menus or figure out, um, figure out activities for everyone. You get on the ship and everything is right there for you. So corporate meeting groups are another great affinity group. And then finally, the last one I wanna spotlight here are fundraising groups. And again, we're not going to go into deep detail today, but our fundraising groups, we do have an amenity with our groups program for a fundraising donation. And this is any organization that is a 501c3 organization. So that's nonprofit status. So think of your um, big brothers, big sisters, your humane societies, the church that you go to. 
lots of organizations out there are looking for a unique, unique way to raise funds. And the great thing by doing a carnival fundraising group is there's really no obligation on their part. Their obligation is to help you promote it or to give you access to whomever their supporters are. So you get the business, Carnival gets people on board, and then the nonprofit does get a check back after the cruise returns. So we'll talk more about fundraising groups on another call, but just know that that's another successful affinity group. Let's go through and talk about some of the group basics now. So we've defined sort of why you want to do groups and a few of the different types of groups, but let's talk about the mechanics of actually booking a group with Carnival. So with Carnival, we consider a group a minimum of eight staterooms. Now that's pretty standard across the industry, at least with the, the big contemporary cruise lines out there. So eight rooms is what makes up a group. Now what's different with Carnival is you actually have to book the group as a group from the very beginning. I'm guessing many of you, if you're brand new to the industry, have probably made individual bookings, which we also call FIT bookings, but a group, you've probably used the, the make, make a group booking or make an individual booking, you would want to choose make a group booking. Has to be booked as a group from the beginning. You can't end up with eight staterooms and then all of a sudden turn them into a group. They're two different systems. So really what we're encouraging with this is those affinity groups. We want those affinity groups to come in. We want you to book them as a group from the very beginning. Now, when you're booking your group, we do protect group rates down to one stateroom. So if you out there, you've got a group leader, they want that date and you've held 20, 30 rooms, however it may be. And for whatever reason, it just wasn't a success. Do know that we protect the group down to one room. So we're not gonna kick them out of the group. We're not gonna reprice them. Their rate at whatever they booked would be protected. Obviously they wouldn't get the perks that come along with the group, but group rates are protected down to one stateroom. Group amenities are protected at five staterooms. So um, keep that in mind. So groups are considered eight rooms. We do protect amenities at five rooms and we protect rates at, down to one room. The group amenities, so if you've promised them an onboard credit or champagne and chocolate or bathrobes or whatever it may be, as long as they have five rooms in the group, they would still get those amenities. There's a few amenities that they wouldn't get. We're not gonna do a shared cocktail party for them. We can't do the fundraising donation for the, the lower amount, but for the most part, all of the group amenities with a few exceptions are protected. Keep in mind when you take out group space, it's all going to be on a guarantee basis and it is not going to be a guaranteed room until we get the full deposit. We're gonna talk through deposits here in just a moment here. But know that when you take out a group, let's say you're taking out four Bs, six Bs, and eight Bs, you're not going to get specific room numbers. You're just going to be able to hold a certain number in that category. So we'll talk about categories in just a moment, but it is on a guarantee basis and it does not actually become a booking until you put the full deposit down on it. So when we're talking about groups, um, Groups, group rates, you are going to get, let me back up just a little bit, you are going to get um, not really a discount on it. I know a lot of folks like to say, hey, I'm coming in with this big group of 20, 30 people, which is fantastic, and they want to know what the discount is. The biggest perk of booking a group is not necessarily the rate. So the rate is usually comparable to early saver. So our early saver rates are the ones with the non-refundable deposit group rates are usually comparable to whatever early saver is at the time of booking, but they are fully refundable up until final payment. So as long as you are birthing people or assigning state rooms with full deposits and names under the group rate, which is fair code PGY, then it would be fully refundable up until final payment. Now, kind of right along with what I was saying, group rates are available on most sailings and they're usually equivalent to our early saver offers. Um, the only thing is they don't have the non-refundable clause to them. So the benefit of doing a group is not necessarily for a price advantage, even though the longer you hold it, the more competitive it may be. The benefit is, is you're able to lock that rate in. If you've been doing car business with Carnival for a while, you may notice we run a lot of sales. So because the sales are so short term and it's hard to promote anything for a length of time, 
um, we let you lock the group rates in and you have usually up to 60 days to go out and promote those. So that's the biggest benefit is being able to lock a rate in and promote it. It's not necessarily going to be the lowest rate as you go through, there might be special offers out there and we'll talk about those in a moment. But the benefit of blocking groups is to have a rate that's locked in that you can go out and promote. One thing I do want to remind you of, especially these days, <clears throat> is that group space may close out at a certain point. So as space starts to fill up on the ship or on a sailing, we may close out group space. So you want to make sure that you're booking your groups as far out in advance and getting people to book as far out in advance as far out in advance as well, because group space will close out at a certain point. <coughs> It's also, so with that in mind, that we might close out group space and you might not be able to add anyone else to your group, it's better to block more rooms than you think you need. Because I can tell you, and I think every BDM out there can tell you, we've seen groups where there's a family and they've calculated it down to, we need 12 rooms. So what do you do? You hold 12 rooms and then guess what? If someone else comes along that they forgot to invite or decided that wants to join on, there's not that space for them. So it's better to block too many rooms and to have extra rooms. You can always cut that block down, but what may happen is if you have to add additional rooms later, those rooms may not be available. We might not have that category. We might be closed to groups, or they could be at a higher price point. So please block more rooms than you think you need. We know that there's a certain attrition that goes with groups. So we do expect that a lot of folks will book additional rooms with the hopes of selling it. <clears throat> right along with that, please book several different category options as well. So you might have a group leader who is very thrifty and frugal and thinks that everyone in the group wants interior rooms, but you actually might have some folks that want to do a balcony room. So make sure that you're holding a variety of different categories so they have different price points to choose from. You might have some folks that <clears throat> for a little additional, they don't mind booking into a balcony. So you want to make sure you have those available in your group allotment when you take out group space. And then finally, when you're booking groups, when you go to actually birth the rooms, and we'll talk about birthing, that's when you assign the room with names and full deposit, you can have a combination of, of um, different add-ons. So you can have some of the guests with our Carnival Vacation Protection, some without. You can have some with prepaid gratuities and some without. Same thing with our air program. You can have some guests with flight of fun and some without. So it can be a combination within the group. So we're, that's a little bit of an overview on taking out your group space. So again, take out more space than you think you need and take out a variety of categories. So while we're talking about categories, let's talk just briefly about how the categories work on Carnival so you understand what you're able to take out as part of your group allotment. So when we're looking at a Carnival ship, the main categories are going to be category four, which is going to be interior, six is an ocean view, and eight is a balcony. Those are gonna be your three standard room types, interior, ocean view, and balcony. So four, six, and eight. And the letter after the number, the further into the alphabet, the higher the category is. So a 4A is going to be your minimum interior. A 4G is going to be on a higher deck. It could be say on the Lido deck. So when you're taking out group space, it's going to be on these three main types of rooms. So when we're looking at a 4A, just to clarify a little more, 4A is a minimum that's front and back on the minimum deck, so down on deck one. It's considered to be better to be midship. So 4B is the next category up. It's in the middle of the ship. It's on the same deck, but it's in the middle of the ship. The next deck up, up on deck two, 4B goes to the front, and then the next category up is a 4C, which is in the middle. So you can see how it stair steps its way up. And typically the difference between say a 4A, 4B, 4C between the categories is pretty minimal. It tends to be $10, $15 difference. So that gives you the ability, one, to upsell, but also to sell them based on location. So hopefully not everyone wants, well, I think everyone will want the least expensive, 
But for just a little bit more, you can get them on a higher deck, close to the pool or close to Camp Ocean or close to the gym, wherever, whatever their interest is. And that's really where you're going to make the book the perfect vacation for them. So again, four A is the minimum, and then it stair steps its way up. Same thing with the sixes, with the ocean view rooms, and then with the eights for the balconies. So those are the main categories you're going to be able to take group space out in. Do know that you're not going to be able to take out, say, 30 rooms in one category. The way Go CCL is set up, you'll only be able to take out a few rooms in each category. But again, that gives you the ability to upsell and hopefully sell on location. Now, any rooms, I hear this question a lot, any rooms that are limited in nature, you're not going to be able to hold as part of your group allotment. So a group allotment is all on a guarantee basis. It's all speculative. And to get some of these specialty rooms that are limited, that there's not a lot of, you actually have to put down names and full deposit. So a few of those that I outlined here, just so you're familiar, a 1A, which hopefully you're not selling the 1As, that's actually a bunk bedroom, it's an upper lower room, a PT is a porthole room, and then any category ending in an S is a suite. So ocean suite, junior suite, grand suite, vista suite, those are all limited and you can always add them to your group with the full names and deposits, but you're not able to hold them as part of your group allotment. Same goes for our specialty state rooms. So Havana state rooms all begin with H, Family Harbor all begin with F, Cloud Nine Spa state rooms all begin with S. Those are limited in nature, so you can only add them again with full names and deposits. Also, when you're taking out your space, everything is based on double occupancy. So it's all based on two people in the room. There's a limited number of rooms on the ship that will hold three, four, or five people. And I know this question comes up a lot, but just so you know, you are not able to hold triples, quads, and quints as part of your group allotment, but you can always add them with a full per person deposit. So everything is double occupancy on a group allotment, and then anything specialty can always be added with the names and the full deposit. And we'll talk through that in a second here. So you're able to take out group space and lock in that rate and promote it. There's a few other perks that come along with a group. One of them is going to be the tour conductor credit. Now you'll hear this called a variety of different things. You'll hear it called a TC credit, a tour conductor credit. You'll hear it called a one for 15, but it all means the same thing. So the thought is, is you've got a group leader out there, a clear cut group leader who is bringing people in and you wanna be able to reward them in some ways for bringing that business in. So we give them a credit and that credit is for every 15 full fared guests, the 16th person gets a free credit. We don't like to call it a free room because as you'll see in just a moment, it gets a little misleading. So they get a credit for every 15 full fared guests, the 16th person, there's a credit. Now, full fared, remember I mentioned just a minute ago, everything with groups is based on double occupancy. So only the first and second guests in the room are considered full fare. So doesn't matter if you've got rooms there with third, fourth, and fifth, they don't count towards the TC credit, only the first and second guest. Now to figure out how many TC credits you get, you would take the total number of your first and second guests and divide by 16. That would then tell you how many TC credits you have. Now, how do you figure out what the amount of that TC credit is? Well, the good news is you don't really have to, the system does that for you. Um, but just so you understand how it is calculated, and the reason I'm saying don't call it a free room um, is because of this. So the TC credit, the way we calculate it, is based on the cruise fare portion. So if you remember, if some of you, some of you may not know this, but just to go through very quickly, a cruise rate is made up of three parts. You've got the cruise fare, which is the commissionable portion. Then you have your non-commissionable fees, which are also called NCFs. The two of those bundled together are always the price the consumer will see. And then on top of it are going to be miscellaneous taxes and fees. So all three of those together make up your cruise rate. Now, when we're talking about the TC credit, it's only the cruise fare portion that is calculated into the tour conductor credit. So, the tour conductor credit or the TC credit is an average of all of the categories booked. So in this example, let's say $300 was your minimum, was the least expensive within your group, but maybe you had a suite in there for $1,200. Maybe that brought the average up 
to let's say $600. So that would be whatever that amount comes to would be the amount of your TC credit regardless of how many you earned. So whatever the calculation is for the value of the TC credit, if you earn two of them, both of them would be the same value. If you earn three of them, would be the same value. And just a very quick note, there is no limit to how many TC credits can be earned. So I know that was a, a lot to take in, um, but hopefully it demystified the TC credit a little bit more. The main thing I want you to know with TC credits is the system automatically calculates it. The credit is not actually on the booking until final payment. That's when the group is finalized. At that point, you can then tell us what to do with the credit. So let's say you earn two TC credits and it was worth 600, that's 1200. You can take all that money and put it on the group leaders room. You can divide it by multiple rooms. You can use for onboard credit, but basically you have to call us and tell us what to do with that TC credit. So let's go into another feature of groups. So not only do you lock in the price, you've got the TC credit, you're gonna have amenity points. So group amenity points are going to be a number of points that we put on the booking that you're able to use to give to your clients. So these are points that they're going to be based on availability. So if it's a high demand sailing and almost sold out, there may be zero points. If you're looking a little further out, you may notice we have four or five points, maybe even six in some cases on sailings. But those points are for you to use to build your promotion and for you to give to your clients. So one thing I want you to know, don't ever, this list right here, you can find this list in GoCCL. We'll talk about it with the third boot, boot camp here. But this list, do not take it and give to a group leader and say, hey, we've got four points, what do you wanna do? That really takes away your power. Make sure you have this list in front of you and when they come to book the group, you tell your group leader what you can and can't do. And if they do need more points, let's say they want a cocktail party, they want a group photo and they want bathrobes and you need additional points, you can buy up the amenity points. So if the sailing has zero on it and you wanted to add some amenities, you could do that. If it has four points and you need seven points, you can always buy up amenity points. So when I say buy up amenity points, that means that you would increase the number of points and then the additional amount would just get rolled into the commissionable cruise rate that you give to the client. The rate goes up a very, very minimal amount. It goes up a dollar a day per person per point. Saying it easier, it's for every person on a three-day cruise, each point is $3. On a four-day cruise, each point is $4 five-day cruise, five dollars. So the system will calculate it for you, but know that it goes up a very minimal amount. But this really gives you the ability to build the promotion that you want. Please make sure you know going into the group what amenities you want to use, because if you don't choose them by final payment, you forfeit them. And we really want you to know how you want to use those points from the very beginning too. Another benefit of doing a group is you can customize it. I mentioned at the very beginning when I talked about meeting space, um, but you can customize the group. Remember, there's a lot going on on the cruise ship. We've got great entertainment and dining and lots of things going on through, throughout the day. But if you wanted to customize a little more, if you're bringing on say a band group or a comedian, if you're bringing on a Zumba instructor, if you're bringing on someone who does quilting or knitting um, and is teaching a class, we can hold meeting space for you. So the meeting space is going to be offered complimentary, but we do ask that there's flexibility because we have to work with the ship. Let's say you've got a group of 50 people coming on board, which is a fantastic size group. That's a great size group, but we also have to remember that there's another three, four, 5,000 people on the ship. So we've got to keep the carnival programming in place as well. So we'll go more into detail next week on this one. But basically, you would go to our group event planning team and they would be able to help you with requests. So do know if you've got a meeting group, a band group, or any type of group that requires meeting space, we can look at that meeting space for you. And then finally, this is the biggest one for me. Let's talk about the payment flexibility because this is a big one and I think it also trips a lot of people up. So I want to make sure you all have a full understanding of how our payments work as well. So if you are booking an individual room, we call that an FIT, you're booking an individual, they would have a deposit due within roughly anywhere from an hour to two days. 
obviously with a group, you can't get monies in that quickly. So what we do is we give you some payment flexibility. Now this is assuming that you're booking far enough out. So when you're blocking group space, you do have three different payment dates. When you block the group space, again, as long as you're booking further out, and just a side note, I would be looking at at least 10 to 12 months to book a group, if not further. Um, that's gonna give you enough time for people to plan and to get their monies in. So let's assume you're booking far enough out. We're only going to require $25 per person within 60 days. Now, when I said the payments trip people up a lot, this is what trips people up most of the time. That $25, do not tell anyone that you only need $25 because what will happen is they'll give you that money and they might tell you they're going and then they don't make another payment. Um, you want to ask for a higher deposit. The reason we do the $25 per person is to give you, the travel advisor, a break on getting money to us. This is not necessarily meant for the consumer. This is meant for the travel advisor. If you're collecting only $25 per person or anything less than the full deposit, it sits on group level and it can be used to hold the group space but they do not get a secure booking until they give us full deposit and names. And they can't give us names until they give us full deposit. So $25 per person is all that we ask of you. And that's the money that has to be made on group level to hold your allotment. Now, second deposit is going to be roughly 120 to 150 days prior to the cruise. It depends on the length of itinerary. So by that time, you should have everyone's full deposit in and all of the rooms should be birthed or assigned. And then final payment is going to be the same uh, as individual bookings. So roughly 60 to 75, in fact, 90 days in many cases these days. So just depending on the length of itinerary, final payment will be due roughly anywhere 60 to 75 to 90 days prior. Now, when I talk about full payment, so $25, again, that's more of a courtesy hold on the group space. That's still speculative with anything less than full deposit. When you're ready to assign the room, and we call that birthing, that's birthing with an E, I know it sounds really funny, but when you assign the room, you put the names on the room, you put the deposit down, that's when you can choose an actual room number and you can choose their dining time. So the sooner they do that, the better, because they get more of a selection of state rooms and dining time. It also becomes a secure booking. So here's the guideline of the full per person deposits. These are just the regular deposit guideline. So anywhere from $100 per person for the shorter cruises, up to $400 per person for the longer cruises. Once you've gone ahead and birthed them and assigned their room, you get, an you get another booking number. Then it is a solid booking. So that's another reason why you do not want to get anything less than the full per person deposit because they can go ahead and choose their room, lock it in, and even if the entire group cancels, they are protected because they've, got, they've been assigned their room and they've got the full deposit down. Just to break that down a little bit further, there are two levels for groups. So you've got your group level, that's your courtesy hold. You'll wind up with a group booking number and that's what all of your allotment is under. So you're not holding, again, as we talked about at the beginning, you're not holding actual cabin numbers, you're just holding requests. Now, again, once they give you the full per person deposit with the names, then you can go ahead and birth or assign their stateroom. That's when you would pick a specific stateroom. So what will happen is you will end up with a group booking number and then a bunch of booking numbers that fall under your group. We actually call those IBRs, they're individual booking reservations. So you'll wind up with each person as they put their deposit names down with their own individual booking number. And might be beating a dead horse, but I wanna mention it one more time here. When we're talking about group payments, please make sure that you pay very, very close attention to what the deposit dates are, what your option dates are. I mentioned with first deposit, you have to have, um, you have 60 days to get $25 in per person. That's an all or nothing. If you're holding 10 rooms, that's $500 that would be due by the first option date. If you have anything less than 500, the entire group allotment will cancel. So make sure, even if you're just short by $10, the whole thing will cancel. So if you're coming up on first deposit and you are short money, you've got a couple options. One, you could reduce space. 
You could choose to put additional money down. Sometimes the travel advisor or a group leader will choose to put their own money down because it is refundable up until final payment. But you have to do something or the system will automatically cancel everything. It's an all or nothing. It doesn't say, oh, she's got enough for eight rooms and reduce it down to just eight. It just cancels all of them. By second deposit, same thing. All of the rooms that you're holding should have the full deposit in. And at that point, your group should be birthed or assigned. Now, just a quick note here is if you're still out promoting and it's first deposit, any rooms that you have birthed already. So if you've gone ahead and you put full deposit in names on one room, and let's say you still had nine rooms up at group level, let's say those nine rooms cancel, that one room with the deposit would still be active. So it will not cancel even if all the group allotment cancels. So that's another reason why you want to go ahead and birth your room as soon as possible. I mentioned at the very beginning that there are some rates that may come in lower at times. The benefit of a group rate is being able to lock it in and promote it. Do you know that most promotional rates that we run, past guest rates, military rates, early saver rates, um, resident rates, if they're a lower rate or a better deal, maybe they have an onboard credit, you can book them into the group. Just like with those specialty rooms, just like with a suite or with a triple or quad, you can book these special rates into your group and they would count towards your tour conductor credit. Most of the time they include the amenities. There are a few promotional rates out there that cannot be added to groups. So those are going to be namely interline rates, casino rates, because they're already pretty aggressive and um, really good offers. They're not combinable with groups and some VIFP targeted offers. So those could be like the Cheers package or Wi-Fi package if we're running those type of promotions. So those are not combinable with groups. But any other promotional rate that you see out there, you can book them in with the full names and the required deposit, and they would count towards your tour conductor credit. So keep this in mind, anytime we run an early saver sale with deposits from $50 per person or 50% reduced deposit, then you can book those into the group. So let's say you've got a quad, normally under a group, a quad on a seven day sailing would be $1,000 per person. If we're running a $50 per person deposit sale, then four people would only be $200. So it is a lesser amount to actually choose and assign the room. So if you're booking promotional offers, they do follow the same rules as if you were booking an individual, the client must qualify for that promotional rate. So if it's a military rate, they have to qualify for military, active, retired, or reserves. Um, again, you have to have the names and full deposits. Most of them do include the amenity points, um, but if you're booking them into your group, remember you can never book anything outside and then pull it in, has to be done within your group, then they would count towards the one for 15. Speaking of special offers, I wanted to mention this because it's on every single one of our cruises. Guests don't have to do anything, but if you're doing a group and you're trying to make it an annual event, we do offer um, a future cruise vacation program. So everyone, they don't have to sign up for anything. As soon as they get home, they have an offer that's good for four weeks after their cruise. It's an early saver rate. They're going to have a reduced deposit, which is going to be 50% reduced deposit. They can get a $50 onboard credit, two category upgrade, and that's all combinable with groups. So when I'm talking about special offers that are combinable with groups, you can book them on this future cruise vacation offer. You would need to put their VIFP number in for the offer to pop up, but you can absolutely book this offer within your group. And the reason I think this one is so important is if you have a group that goes year after year after year after year, once they get off the ship and they're excited, they're ready for next year, you can easily book them under this offer under your next year's group. All right, couple things here at the end. I did wanna mention because many times you'll tell me, I hear all the time people saying, I've got this large group, does it still follow the same guidelines? Yes, anything from eight rooms up to 249 rooms follows the exact same guidelines that I just gave you. Now, we consider a large group 250 or more staterooms. If you're more than 250 staterooms, please reach out to one of us, talk to your BDM, um, because there we will have to work with our revenue management department and groups to get the space for you. But 
they would have a different set of terms and conditions. So mainly I just want you to know if we're talking anything less than 250 rooms, it would fall under the exact same policies that I just told you. Charters come up an awful lot. If you're talking about a charter or if you have a client who says, I could fill up that whole ship. Well, sometimes they'll tell you I could fill up that whole boat. Um, full ship charters are basically where a charter client buys out that cruise and they own the cruise for the week. So they can be very profitable, but they do require an irrevocable letter of credit. And usually a great qualifier, if someone tells you they could charter and fill up the whole ship, usually throw out a million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollars as the required letter of credit. It means my money's in the bank and it's guaranteed. Um, so that's a great way to figure out whether they're serious or not. And again, if you've got a client that wants to do a charter and you really think it's viable, reach out to your BDM or someone within our team. Finally, let me round it out here. I went a little over, I'm a little thrown off since we started later, but a few tips if you are doing groups. So going through the basics here, book your groups as early as possible to get the best rates, the best amenity points, and the best selection of staterooms. So we're open through April of 2026. It's never too soon to start booking your group. So get those groups on the books. And I will tell you, as we get closer and closer, as space fills up, the rates get higher, the amenity points get lower, and there's less selection for the staterooms. <clears throat> we talked about this at the beginning, book more cabins than you need. Remember, you can always drop those unneeded ones, but it's better to have more than not enough. I think we got this point across, but just to say it again, collect full deposit at the first deposit date instead of the $25. This helps makes the second payment even easier, and it may give you some additional time to keep promoting if you're keeping that money on group level. Always, this is a big one, and I think even this one with individual bookings, move those due dates up. I would say anywhere from a week to 10 days, because if your contract says February 1st, I can guarantee you that the client is going to come to you with the saddest story you've ever heard and ask if they can have additional time. Um, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. But if you give them a date that's maybe a week or 10 days prior and they come to you, then you can easily tell them, you know what, I think we can give you a few extra days. So it gives the client a bit of a cushion and gives you a bit of a cushion to get that money in as well. So always back up those due dates. This is a good one for individual as well, but make sure you have a passenger registration form. That way you've got all the guest information right in front of you at your fingertips where you don't have to ask for it multiple times. Get signatures on there too. Put things on like the um, vacation protection. If you're selling any type of insurance or travel protection, if they decline it, make sure they sign it. If it's a non-refundable deposit, try to get them to sign it as well. The more protection you have, the better, and the more information you have in front of you for your, your back office, even better as well. This is a big one. Please don't miss those final payment dates or options because once the group cancels, we may not be able to get space back or it may be dramatically higher. And I'll tell you, as Carnival BDNs or anyone on our team, we hate to see anyone lose space because once it's gone, we really don't have the flexibility to get it back to the original uh, pricing that you had. So make sure, mark those dates on a calendar, whether it's a paper calendar or an Outlook calendar or Gmail or whatever you use, but make sure you stay on top of those option dates. And then finally, make sure you choose those amenity points immediately. You can always change them before final payment, but that way you know you've got them locked in and you don't forget to assign them because you do forfeit at final payment if you haven't assigned them. So that is all for our basics today. Thank you for all of your time. You guys are amazing. Have a great day. And remember, travel agents rock. Bye, everyone.